This video covers America's largest jetty reconstruction project, which involves hundreds of thousands of tons of giant boulders and one of the most unique large excavators I have ever seen. But first, let's cover some history as far as what the heck this jetty is and why it exists. The Columbia River is the largest on America's west coast, draining about 259,000 square miles of land across seven states and Canada. Like any other major river in America, the Columbia became a crucial trade route in the 17 and 1800s. But there was an issue. A steep offshore underwater slope combined with high winds caused 40-foot swells and massive beach erosion, meaning navigating the mouth of the river changed with every season. The result was thousands of shipwrecks and one of the most challenging rivers in the world to enter. In 1882, the federal government decided enough's enough, and thanks to the passing of the River and Harbor Act, engineers explored methods of taming the Columbia. The solution was a jetty system called the MCR, starting with the South Jetty, which began construction in 1885. To build the 4.5 mile structure into the water, crews drove timber piles into the seafloor with a rail system across. Steam locomotives and dump cars would then move the stones from nearby quarries to their final resting place, mostly underwater. Once completed in 1895, the jetty began dramatically changing the river, better flushing sediment out to sea rather than letting it accumulate. By the 1930s, the ocean swells had flattened the existing structures, so the first rebuilding began with 2.3 million tons of stone brought in under three contracts. Today, the Columbia River system supports $24 billion in economic activity, so maintaining the channel is vital to the region. This is why the federal government launched a third major project here, totaling over a quarter billion dollars to rebuild the now three jetties yet again. And we're almost to the reconstruction today, but just a little bit more background. In 2017, I went to work for a legendary construction company in their Northwest district. The project was the Jetty A Rehabilitation, but I wasn't at the Columbia River. I was hundreds of miles northeast in a small Washington town of Mount Vernon at the Beaver Lake Quarry. Our task was to produce over 80,000 tons of new jetty stone. We'd carefully blast the giant granite hill daily, and then a PC-2000 excavator picked through the shot. While most blasting focuses on turning everything into nice diggable sugar, we wanted the big stuff, which made digging a whole lot more challenging. As the PC-2000 struggled through the sometimes 80 plus ton stones, it would cast those within our target gradation, between 5 and 35 tons, aside for hauling by a 990 loader or pushing by a D10 dozer. We weighed every rock and loaded them onto on-road trucks, sometimes only one at a time. The trucks hauled enormous stones to a nearby port, where we loaded about 10,000 tons onto a barge using an enormous Lee Bear crane. Once complete, the barge floated hundreds of miles to the Columbia River, where crews placed each stone. After the two jetties on the north side were completed, the feds focused on the final project, the South Jetty Reconstruction, a nearly $150 million contract. Jay McAmis of California won the contract and began preparing to mobilize for work in the summer of 2019. And the mining excavator I saw them modifying for the work caught my attention because it was unlike anything I'd ever seen. And now with the history lesson out of the way, let's get into the specifics of this project. As I mentioned, these jetties are critical in taming the mouth of the Columbia River and keeping shipping and fishing traffic safe. The MCR system works by channelizing the river, allowing the natural flow to flush sand and sediment that would otherwise collect, creating unpredictable sandbars and currents. During storm events, the jetties also prevent enormous waves and surges from traveling upriver. 
This is why rebuilding them is so important. Even though the initial construction and rebuilding efforts involved huge quantities of rock, the ocean is no slouch with its waves eating at the stone structure over the decades. By rebuilding the system, these jetties will be good for protecting this essential area for many more decades to come. In 2019, J.E. McCamus began the reconstruction, beginning with mobilizing their fleet of equipment and building access roads. Because of the harsh winters, work took place over five seasons, with crews mobilizing and demobilizing all equipment annually by barge. Every season, they worked further down the jetty, completing the entire 6.5 mile length in the final season completed last year. First, J.E. McCamus crews quarried the rock from several operations in Washington and Oregon, shipping every stone hundreds of miles. When they arrived at a loadout area along the Columbia River, loaders removed each stone and trucks transported them to a staging area near the jetty. They tracked every rock through the process, with each one having a unique weight and number. For placement, a loader loaded each stone onto rigid frame trucks, one at a time. The trucks then made what was sometimes a 20 minute trip for each stone, often having to reverse for long distances due to the tight working area atop the jetty. After the truck dropped the next stone off, the excavator operator noted which rock it was for reporting to the Army Corps of Engineers. Then placement would begin, which was a lot more complex than stacking some rocks. But before I talk placement, let's review the monster machine that made it happen. Based on a standard 6020B Caterpillar mining excavator, Jay McCamus worked with Pearson Cat and Pierce Pacific to customize the machine for the specific application. While normally a very stubby machine with a big mining bucket at the end, this machine's custom boom and stick offered over 90 feet of reach, while the custom rock bucket and thumb allowed the operator to grab rocks and place them in various ways. The machine also featured Trimble GPS to help the operator place every stone according to the design. At the time, it was the only machine like it in the world. Now back to placement. The process was part science and part art. Every rock had a different weight and shape, but the design had to be perfect. The real complexity was ensuring all the rocks locked with one another, preventing the ocean from prematurely wearing the jetty. The operator also had to understand the size and shape of existing stones, often repositioning each to ensure a perfect fit. And despite the 250 ton weight of the mining machine, the ride could still be rough as some rocks were 40 plus tons each. Rinse and repeat this process for 400,000 tons of rock over five years and 6.5 miles, and the jetty was finally complete. Now that we understand what the heck is happening here, let's sit back and enjoy the show.
huge shout out to J.E. McCamus for having us out not once but twice over the duration of this project. I wish I could have hung out a lot more. It was absolutely spectacular. And if you enjoyed this, please be sure to like and subscribe. We have so many more neat videos coming soon.